Hockey fans nervously watching for any word considering a labor dispute between the league and the players union. Today, more cuts across the league, and we now know that the first three exhibition games for the San Jose Sharks have already been canceled. The lockout began Sunday when the collective bargaining agreement expired. And today, the league told the office staffers to get ready for a 20% pay cut and four-day work weeks beginning October 1st. Several players are already making plans to play elsewhere. Sharks players like Captain Joe Thornton are already reportedly signing contracts with a team in Sweden. He did that during the last lockout in 2005, which wiped out the entire season. But will that happen again this time? Sports analyst Marty Lentz joining me now. Always good to see you. Thanks for coming. Glad to be here. What do you make about this? I mean, here we go again. Uh, with this, this what third lockout since 1994. Uh, why do contract negotiations seem to go this way with the NHL, that it that they that they don't come to resolution and, and you start having lockouts and you start chopping away the season and in one case eliminating it. Well, I think in some concerns it's it's kind of like some of the other sports. It, the smaller market teams, their teams that aren't generating revenue, they're trying to find a way to preserve them. Uh, and so I think what they think is if we can go in and change a bit of the revenue structure. Uh, in that what they're trying to do is divide the revenue now they're trying to drop the revenue down from 49 to 47 percent the mm -hmm. share that the players get but what the players say is drop it from their their range like 54 52 I know I'm getting a bit of the minutia use that leftover stuff to help those struggling franchises so even the players are willing to kick it back in but to the broader point I think the NHL says they want to preserve some of the smaller market teams and so they they, they say they need to do this so the teams that maybe aren't making as much money there's probably a few of those north of the border they want to keep them solvent they're trying to do that and they say the way to do it is by you know giving back more to the league so obviously this is not good for the league uh, talk about the impact on the league overall you try to preserve the smaller teams if you wipe out a whole season again I, I remember that and what an impact that had just on the uh, you know, you keep trying to keep fans, trying to generate fans. They go away. They start doing other stuff for a whole year. Well, and here's the other problem, too, the timing of it right now. Because, and I say this, no disrespect, I love the NHL, but no one cares about the preseason. You've got Major League Baseball, the playoffs are heating up. You've got football, NFL, and college heating up, at least in this country. Now, again, in Canada, hockey's their sport. It'll impact them. But here, where the majority of the fans are and the majority of the teams are, people aren't going to care. So I, it, the timing of it, too, I, I just find a bit, I, I like to say, tone deaf a little bit as to why they decide to do this. So, uh, you know, again, you can put the blame on the ownership and on the NHL and on the players. Uh, but the fact is they're both going to lose out because they're going to end up losing fans again and alienating fans. Yeah, hey, let's talk a little bit about who gets hurt most. We've been talking the players, the owners, office staff, people like that. But what about the stadium workers or the vendors or or even the local restaurants and I remember we did all kinds of stories in downtown San Jose because there's that corridor mm -hmm. near the HP Pavilion that really thrives it's kind of that that's their bread and butter events at the HP Pavilion and you wipe out a hockey season that's a bunch of events gone and that really hurts those folks yeah in the case of it we can argue the merits of trickle down but it really is real in this instance because people that go to the games they buy the hot dogs they 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 use facilities the, the people that run parking and management all that revenue all those people that work in those positions are basically going to be out of jobs and a lot of those people are obviously they're, they're lower wage earners so to some degree they're going to be out trying to find other jobs you know whatever they're it, it, right exactly so so this whole thing you know it impacts a whole region for a whole team now in a market like San Jose it hurts but you know the region we're a huge city I think again these smaller cities I think of maybe the Calgary's uh, the Edmonton's you know up in Canada or even some of the smaller markets the Nashville's places like that here in the US that may have because their, their economies and their markets maybe aren't as elastic aren't as if you want to say uh, you know broad in scope of, of employment and in population base I don't know how well it will impact them here again it hurts people locally that work here but from an attention standpoint you've got the A's you've got the Giants you've got the 49ers you got the Raiders and again I'm not saying there's plentiful jobs here like that but some of those people may be able to find it because there's just greater opportunity Let's to do talk so here. A, a little bit what, about what happens with some of these players that are signing deals we talked about Joe Thornton for example uh, you go to the Swedish team and you get great for them yeah if they lose their hockey season they've got another place to go and, and keep some income keep their skills up but let's suppose you're one of those players you sign a contract with a team like Sweden or, or it could be Russia whatever and then all of a sudden they come to some agreement before the regular season starts. Are you locked into that contract? Can you get back out and play for the NHL? Or does the NHL stand a chance of losing some players even if they come to resolution? Probably a combination of both. Jor Thornton has to be careful because the Swedish Elite League has said they are not going to sign players unless they commit to play a full season for the Swedish Elite League. Now, maybe Joe Thornton has a great 
agent and can negotiate those sort of things. So it probably so depends on right, who's, who's representing you. But at least the, the Swedish Elite League has come out saying we're not going to sign NHL guys unless they commit for the full season. The KHL, which is the Continental Hockey League, that's the Russian Professional League, and that actually mirrors more of the NHL. In fact, players there can make close to 65% of what they would make playing in the NHL. They're kind of doing it on a player-by-player -player basis. In fact, they have a list of players that they will and won't sign. They haven't released that. But in that sense, they're maybe being a little more specific. Now, for the KHL, my guess is they'd be glad to get any of those players, and if the league comes back in, they will probably release them. But I think it probably really is a player case by case basis. But each league has kind of put out mandates about how they're going to handle it. All right, we'll see how the negotiations go. Thanks again, Marty Lentz. Always good to see you. Very well. Let's hope we don't lose another hockey season. I, I know Sharks either. fans would, would hate that. I, would I know too. they're upset about all of this.